Hey, what's up guys? It's Carl, and today I am going to make sure that you don't wind up being the kid that has to call mom and dad to come pick you up at your next overnight Milsim game. Now, I did want to touch on this topic, even though it's not super sexy by any means, uh, because this is something that I see people consistently fail on at larger events, and it might not be your fault. Actually, it is your fault. You should always be prepared, <laughs> but I'm going to teach you how to be prepared. Uh, so in front of me, I've got all of the items that I generally bring with me to larger games, uh, that do entail some element of you sleeping in the field. Um, I'm gonna go one by one and explain what it is and why you should have it on your person. Now, keep in mind, this is specifically for uh, larger games that will require you actually being out in the field for an extended period of time. If you're car camping or, you know, the game ends at 7 p.m. and you're going to a hotel, by all means, ignore this. Or maybe don't, I don't know. Now, first up is this large pile of nylon that you see on the table uh, right in front of me here, and it is a Marine Corps issued Philby uh, ruck system. Uh, now, these are, are pretty great. You can find them online, generally for uh, relatively cheap if you are looking to actually, you know, drop uh, a decent amount of money on a, like a serious ruck system. Uh, but as far as airsoft goes, these are kind of perfect in my opinion. Um, I know you can't really see it, but it's got a large central body that just has an absolute ton of space in it. Uh, as well as in this head system right here, um, you have a lot of storage for like small items. Like for me personally, I'll usually uh, keep uh, non-essential stuff that I don't really need to get to super quickly, but stuff like socks or um, a little bit of food, snacks, maybe some eating utensils, uh, eating kit type stuff, generally goes up here. Uh, but there is a ton of room in this thing and all of these other items that you see on the table generally get stowed in it. Um, having a comfortable and quality ruck, I think is kind of uh, step one in success for being able to sustain yourself in the field. Um, and the Philby absolutely facilitates that. Now, keep in mind for the events that I'm talking about here, you're probably not going to be running around with this ruck on you the entire time. It does limit mobility, but that's not really what it's for. The type of games that I'm talking about, you're going to load up everything that you need and you're going to ruck to some type of patrol base or fighting position where you're actually going to set up all of your sleep equipment. So keep that in mind. It's not for running around the entire game. So if you're worried about the size, don't trip. Now, I'm not really going to get into the mechanics of building a fighting position in this video. It's a bit outside of the scope of what we want to talk about, For but for practical purposes, we'll assume that you probably are sleeping in some sort of defensive posture if the game is going to continue running at night. There are some events that do, you know, continuous 40-hour uh, non-stop milsim, and that's kind of what I'm talking about here. So step one in making sure that you are able to get some type of comfortable sleep is ground insulation. Now the earth does get very cold at night, and if you don't have anything that is going to be a barrier between all of your uh, sleep kit and your body, it's just going to rob you of that warmth, and it's gonna suck. Uh, so these big tarps you can get at any kind of surplus store generally for about, you know, $20 or so. If you don't have a need for ground insulation, maybe it's super warm uh, at your event at night, um, I still recommend you bring it. You can always string it up into the trees and make some sort of uh, shelter if you need to. Now, the second component to your sleep system here is going to be your sleeping pad. Uh, this is a pretty no frills, uh, thermarest style pad. They're pretty readily available online. Um, I do like the, the more military uh, style ones, like, like this guy is in a nice olive drab. A lot of the ones that you can find at an actual REI or other camping supply store tend to be a little bit like fluorescent, and that's not really something that you want for a Milsim game, obviously. High visibility colors, you don't want the attention. Uh, so like I said, standard Thermarest pad, you are going to put this either on top of uh, your ground insulation or on or inside of your bag, rather. Uh, it really kind of just depends on what type of sleeper you are. Um, you can put it inside the bag if you tend to be super okay with sleeping on your back. For me personally, I tend to kind of toss and turn or uh, kind of curl up at night when I sleep. So putting it inside the bag isn't really an option. Uh, but what this does is provide a little bit of additional insulation and also reflects your own body heat back at you. So it's gonna give you a little bit of cushion against you know the rocks and, and the uneven ground that you're probably sleeping on. And it also does keep you a little bit warmer. Now component number three in your setup is uh, potentially the most crucial one, and that's going to be your actual bag. Uh, if you don't have one, or if you're kind of currently expecting to go out and maybe use a, a cheaper like Walmart bag, 
please, please, please spend the money, get something uh, relatively nice. Like this, it doesn't have to be some crazy, uh, you know, top of the line bag. This is a standard like camping bag from REI. I think I probably spent $100 on it. Uh, and it came with this stuff sack. So this will actually compress down. Um, and I usually throw it in the bottom of the ruck. It gives you a little bit of uh, lumbar padding on top of what the pack actually already has. Uh, but I promise you being warm at night is absolutely worth every penny that you're going to spend on it. Like I said, um, this is nothing super high tech or fancy, uh, but you do want something that is rated for probably about 30 degrees or so. Um, the vast majority of games like might get down to that cold at night, but you, you know, you don't need a, an Arctic bag, probably. All right, so the fourth component here is going to be a pretty straightforward uh, US military issued bivy bag. Now, uh, you should be using a bivy if you're expecting any kind of like moisture at night, be that light rainfall, um, or even just if it gets a little bit dewy, like in the overnight through the morning. Uh, the bivy is specifically designed to keep that moisture out of your sleep system. Obviously, that's going to be very crucial if you are anticipating those conditions. Uh, if that is the case, you would then put your sleeping pad and your sleeping bag inside of the bivy. Uh, they are a bit larger, so they can accommodate that, especially if you're a person that, like I said, like I am, likes to roll around and, and do all sorts of weird alligator rolls at night. Uh, the bivy will accommodate that. Um, it is not a warmth providing system itself. It is specifically for moisture. Now, speaking of moisture, this is component number five, and it is designed to give you just a little bit more protection against that if you are anticipating, let's say, light or immediate showers uh, in the overnight. Um, if it's anything severe, like an actual, you know, torrential downpour, it's not really great for that. Uh, in fact, in the uh, setup that I have it right now, it's, it's more for bugs than anything, but you can attach a rain fly to it uh, and stake it into the ground, and that'll give you a little bit extra protection and make sure that your kit and yourself uh, doesn't get wet. This is a Katoma pop-up US Marine Corps issue tent. Um, this guy, I kind of bring out only every now and then. There are some specific fields that, uh, in my experience, at these larger games do tend to get a little bit wet. Um, it is kind of a pain to carry though. You can see it's it's this sort of disc shape. Um, and despite the fact that the Philby is kind of designed to carry all of this stuff, I haven't really found a setup uh, that is real great for, for bringing this out with me. Um, but it is nice to have if you are, like I said, expecting rain showers at night. Now, just like the other topics that I've covered on this channel, this isn't meant to be exhaustive by any means. I'm just trying to give you guys maybe a little bit of a primer and an intro to what it's like, what the equipment that you generally need to stay warm out in the field in a colder game actually looks like, because in my experience, it's a lot more involved and it's a lot more packing and pack space than I think a lot of people realize. Now, if you are looking at all of this stuff and thinking, wow, that looks like a lot to haul out into the field with you, it is. Uh, but keep in mind, this is all generally military issued stuff. And this is by no means indicative of how far the technology in the backpacking and hiking community have come. And a lot of times those options are going to be a lot smaller, uh, a better quality product, a lot easier to jam in a ruck, but they are very pricey. So this is sort of just uh, how do you get out and do it with stuff that's going to be readily available and isn't going to break your wallet. All right, guys, that's gonna do it for me this week on GITV, but I do want to hear from you as always. Uh, realistically, I wanna know if you guys are interested in more of this sort of gear-focused content that is a little bit more microscopic than uh, the content that we've done previously on the channel. This is all stuff that I really like covering, uh, but I wanna make sure that you guys are enjoying this too, and if so, please let me know in the comments below. Additionally, if you've been that guy that has shown up to a game completely unprepared, Share those stories too, because those are always really fun. Once again, I'm Carl, this is GITV, and I'll see you.